So we all know Jamie Lynn can't stay out of the limelight for too long and with everything that's going on with Britney, she's now decided to release some excerpts from her uh, new and up and coming book titled Things I Should Have Said. And I think we can all agree there's a hell of a lot you should have said with regards to trying to help your sister get out of 13 years where she was basically a slave to the people who were meant to love and care for her. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a few things you could have said about that too, apart from this awful apology with fake tears and all of that but especially since you and Brittany were so close when you were younger to know how much it must hurt her right now to see you using this as a moment again for a cash grab in your own name is just kind of mind-blowing and Brittany even called you out on it so anyway there's been some new updates with regards to Jamie Lynn's book and that is that she's released some excerpts, presumably to try and hype up the whole situation and especially whilst her name and her family are all still relevant. I mean, even Brian has, you know, tried to cash grab a little bit by going on that podcast the other year and Lynn has made some recent filings where she actually was asking for Britney to pay for her lawyers with everything that she was going on in terms of advocating for the ending of the conservatorship. So it's quite clear that, you know, and especially since Lynn actually is living in a mansion paid by Britney and has been, I think, since very, very early on, I think 2003. So, you know, basically everyone in her family has profited off Britney. So let's get into it. And just quickly, I we've hit 2K, so thank you so much for that. And I wonder whether we can hit 2.5K maybe by the end of the year. But I would really appreciate if you were just here watching. But any all support, just hit in the like and subscribe would mean the world. So back to the video. So Jamie Lynn has now come out saying that her parents pushed her to have an abortion when she got pregnant at 16 and tossed insults at her when she decided against adoption before putting her into hiding. And to be fair, I have no doubt that this was probably really scary for Jamie Lynn because she was only 16 herself. So to be cut off from the world and to have insults thrown at you by your own family, like that must have been really hard. And I don't doubt that she's got some trauma probably from that as well that she's had to work through. But it just begs the question as to why she didn't think to reach out and help Brittany when she could see her own sister struggling after having gone through stuff herself. And it just, I don't understand how you can watch your sister for 13 long years suffer something so bad and to see her speak out against the courts to the extent that she now wants to sue her family yet have no say in trying to help her seeing her being stripped from her rights and taken away from her kids because Brittany herself has even come out and said that her family did nothing to help her she said this to the courts so the idea that it was all just a hush hush trying to get things swept under the rug with Jamie Lynn is not at all surprising and notably Remember when Britney said that her dad and anyone involved with conservatorship and her management are the ones that played a key role in punishing her. So again, it's not out of the question that it was, again, like Jamie Link goes on to explain, her management and her dad using the abortion and just trying to be the main ones that were punishing Jamie Lynn. But let's not also forget that Britney has directly called out her sister multiple times because Jamie Lynn participated in not helping and thereby being a coercive member of the extensive abuse that Britney suffered so by doing nothing you do end up kind of co-signing on to it and it does seem that although Jamie Lynn may have gone through some trauma herself that doesn't really absolve her from the stuff that she's basically being complicit in with Britney. So the TMZ article that came out about it says that Jamie Lynn's book claims that her parents controlled her, pushed abortion and warned her that giving birth at 16 would ruin her career. Jamie Lynn says that she went through hell when pregnant at 16 and her parents and her team were a driving force behind her misery, pushing abortion, adoption and going to great lengths to hide her from the public. We've obtained several snippets from the upcoming book. Things I should have said where she lays out the events that followed her telling her parents and management she was pregnant in 2007. And this TMZ article actually only had a couple of lines from the book, whereas there's actually been an article published in the past few days where it gave us quite a bit more, so I'm going to go over that. So, in this excerpt, Jamie Lynn says, I came home from school and Daddy and Brian were there. A single day had elapsed before Daddy's anger brought out the sense of dread everyone felt about my situation. Once Mama and Daddy told my team, things spiralled out of control pretty quickly. 
When I walked in, Daddy, Brian and Mum were in the house, a member of my financial management team was on the phone. There was a whole lot of fighting going on between everyone involved. The entire Spears team was already caught up in my sister's PR difficulties, because as I've said, this was going on in 2007, which was kind of the peak of when Brittany was going through her struggles as well. And everyone around me just wanted me to make this issue disappear. My family and management pulled me out of school until they could figure out what to do next. They took my smartphone away from me. Why does that sound familiar? And fearing the news would get out, insisted that no one share any information with anyone, especially the press. My daddy and I stopped speaking and the tension was terrible. And this does kind of remind me of when I saw a recent or well, not that recent actually, a documentary back of when Jamie Lynn was kind of trying to promote herself and her music career in the country sphere of um, the artistry world. And Jamie, dad, Jamie, um, said that when he was younger, Jamie Lynn was horrible. She, he didn't get on at all. So it's obviously clear that he has now got a soft spot for Jamie Lynn because they didn't get on when they were younger. And I think that's why she bends to his will and doesn't confront him. They've got like this unspoken rule that they now are on the same team and against Britney, they're using that to their advantage. Jamie was more or less the daddy's girl. When Jamie Lynn was young, Jamie Lynn was uh, horrible. She had to be the center of attention. Britney was like her second mother. She agitated everybody to death. She was loud and she was bad. My brother is going to mess up so bad, I hope he flips and rolls. But it's because she had a mind of her own. Jamie Lynn is who she is. What you see is what you get. Sorry about having to change the audio pitch and have it smaller on the screen. It's just those documentaries, especially from Britney's team and Jamie Lynn's team, are very, very generous, let's say, with the way that they hand out their copyrights. So basically, even if it is fair use, they don't care, they're just gonna copyright strike you and that would maybe be the end of my channel. So yeah, that's why that had to happen. But anyway, back with this. So Jamie Lynn's book goes on to say, discussions continued and everyone was certain that termination would be the best course of action. I will never forget when a member of my own team stood up for me and said, you can't force her to abort the baby. She was the first and only person on my team to show any support for my desire to keep my baby. And can I just say it would have been so nice if anyone on Britney's team had spoken up for her and I'm not blaming them because I think a lot of them either had to sign NDAs or were just completely cut out from Britney's life. But again, this all goes down to Jamie being the one to do that so that he'd made it impossible for Britney's team to speak up on her behalf. But anyway, back with this. The next option was for me to go to Mercy Ministries and ding 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 if you thought Lou Taylor that's right because she has some ties to Mercy Ministries where I think it's that she's actually sat on the board and she is very heavily invested in the whole religious scene because her husband is a pastor and in 2009 the Britney Spears Foundation charity which Lou Taylor managed on behalf of Britney was actually bankrupted and reported only $17 worth of assets. $50,000, however, went to Mercy Ministries of Nashville, where Lou Taylor sat on the board. So hopefully some of these are the claims that Mr. Rosengart can now be investigating in the ongoing financial audit of Britney's estate. Especially since Mercy Ministries has its own checkered past, Slate magazine published an entire story called The Mercy Girls and details of how young girls were being taken advantage of. Employees also called the organisation cultish and unhealthy. And if you try and search for it, you won't see it because now they've actually changed their name from Mercy Ministries to Mercy Multiplied. And there's actually a whole Twitter account called Mercy Ministries survivors dedicated to helping people who have gone through it. So it must be pretty bad if there's a whole account and safe space online for people dedicated to helping them come out as survivors of this place. And it's no wonder since Mercy Ministries would allegedly perform exorcism on the girls and groups like Mercy Survivors were formed to help the people they took advantage of, as I just mentioned before. And as a result of all of this, again, they've gone and deleted that whole entire YouTube channel, not the Mercy Survivors, the Mercy Ministries. 
However, in this excerpt, Jamie Lynn goes on to describe Mercy Ministries as a home for unwed mothers in Tennessee where I could eventually give up my baby for adoption. Daddy and I fought, slinging words and tossing insults. He grabbed me by the shoulders and held on tightly in the hopes of bending me to his will. And again, this sounds familiar in how he was almost really physical with Jaden and is resulted in Kevin needing to put on a restraining order against Jamie to protect his kids from them. I got in his face and yelled, no, I won't go. I couldn't deal with any of them. I ran away from them, panting with rage. I'm thankful and blessed for that because growing up, my dad had his issues with substance abuse. You know, he had his demons when it came to drinking and whatnot. So our relationship was always kind of depending upon that issue. I don't have the best past in the world. I got a pretty well checkered past, but you know, Jamie Lynn and Brittany and Brian, when they were children, I just didn't have the, uh, <clears throat> the same mentality that, that I do now of being able to look at the grandchildren and you know, want to be the you know, best grandfather that I can be. Hey, baby. Papa wants to say he loves you. I love you, maybe. When I saw who he was and the man he was capable of being for his grandchildren is when I said, my child deserves that grandfather. So therefore, that's what really matters. You only got one dad, so if he's here, you need to love him. I love you, Papa. All right. I reckon a light came on, and seeing that baby made everything all right. Mwah. Mwah. All right, love y'all. Bye. She's such a little nugget, I can squeeze her face off. Good, good. I can have a good night's rest, hopefully. Home felt like a prison without a smartphone or a connection to the outside world. Oh my god, this sounds so familiar, it's weird. My team believed everyone outside of the inner circle was a potential threat. This is exactly what they did to Brittany. They just cut off everyone who was a support system for her and isolated her to the point of where it just became impossible to escape. And luckily, Jamie Lynn did escape, I suppose, but unfortunately, Brittany wasn't so lucky. They went so far as hiding my pregnancy from my sister, claiming it's too risky to tell Brittany about the baby. I needed her more than ever and she wasn't able to help me in my most vulnerable time. And that's really sad as well because it was so clear how close they were when they were younger. Deanna, to find out what it's like to be Brittany's kid sister. This is what she said. The special relationship that me and my sister share is that anything that's wrong, I can tell her and she'll help me. She is the nicest country girl you'll ever meet. She would do anything for me and we share such a special relationship. The best thing about Brie and Brittany's sister is you get to travel across the world and you get to meet people. I love seeing you performing because I, I, don't know, I guess I just sit around in the family. I would like to be like Brittany, but maybe better, but I don't want to outshine her. People tell me that I have a more mature voice than normal 10 year olds. My advice to Brittany is just scoot over because I'm coming through and I'm going to be the star pretty soon. And as much as it's clear that they really were close, it's also clear that Jamie Lynn was very much wanting to at least compete on Britney's level and because she never reached that amount of fame, I wouldn't doubt that she is just extremely jealous now, even if it's at a subconscious level. And there was clearly an ego even from that age. Britney's condition was spiraling into something more concerning. They were concerned her instability at the time made her untrustworthy. I went along with what my team told me to do because I was a minor and I didn't want to create any more issues. Brittany learned of the pregnancy when the article was released. To this day, the hurt of not being able to tell my sister myself lingers. So how can this be hurting you more than not being able to speak out against everything you saw and witnessed for the 13 long years that you were silenced? And complicit in everything that went on. I don't get how you can say things like the fact that you weren't able to tell her about your pregnancy hurts, but you weren't speaking out against her abuse. It just doesn't make sense. And although she says that Brittany learned of the pregnancy through a magazine publication, I'm pretty sure that actually this footage I'm about to show you is when she first heard of it, but maybe at the time, like she is said in this clip, she doesn't believe it. Brittany, you're right here. You look great right here. Hey, what's up? Please move, 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 move. Are you, are you happy move, about move, the baby? Move, 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 move. About your sister's baby? Guys, guys, you guys, guys, say guys, guys, guys. Come on, you know Jamie right here, baby. Come on, how you feel now? Are you happy about it? That's all I need to know. Come this way, we're going over here. Don't push me, dude. Guys, be nice. Guys, be nice. Everybody's going to get their shots. Guys, we can't get to the car. Guys, we can't get to the car. Guys, just to the car. Guys, just keep moving backwards, please. Just to the car. You can take a million shots. This guy's back up, please, please. Can you tell me, Brittany, how you feel about My sister's not pregnant. No, she is. She's DNA. She's not enough. Whatever. But how you feel? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
The book goes on to say, I was still suffering with morning sickness, which in a way drained me of any fight I may have had at the time. I was banished and basically hidden away. Again, this is so familiar. Misery and loneliness persisted. Those feeling intensified with the team decided Mama and I should be moved from our house to a secure location far away until OK released the story. This irritated me, yet I still couldn't garner the strength to object. Supported by a security team, my mum and I travelled to Connecticut, or so I was told, to an undisclosed location. We flew into New York and then drove for what felt like hours. To this day, I'm not sure where in the northeast we hid. That's really scary. That's almost like a, like, it sounds like kidnapping, but it can't be because obviously Lynn is the parent. But the fact that Jamie Lynn wasn't told where they are, she was had no way to connect to the outside world if something was going wrong or she was in trouble. That's just really scary. And it's also really concerning that Jamie Lynn has gone through the exact type of suffering, ostracizing and isolation that Brittany has gone through. Yet she did nothing to help her. I just don't get it. My baby and I were big news. Why does that sound really egotistical? And I bet she loved all this attention, especially since, again, this was like the peak of Britney's suffering. So Britney was getting a lot of media attention and I'm sure this may be, again, maybe subconsciously rubbed Jamie Lynn up the wrong way. We stayed sequestered for a few more days and drove to the 22 hours back to Kentwood to avoid the paparazzi. The cabin was bad enough, but the endless hours cooped up in the car were awful. I was uncomfortable and tried to sleep most of the way home, and still the isolation continued. This was a painful time for me. And in the passage that TMZ got snippets of, they went on to say that Spears says people from her inner circle came to my room trying to convince me that having a baby at this point in my life was a terrible idea. It will kill your career. You are just too young. You don't know what you're doing. There are pills you can take. We can help you take care of this problem. I know a doctor, adding everyone around me just wanting to make this issue disappear. Jamie Lynn says flatly everyone was certain that termination would be the best course of action. And when they say things like, it will kill your career that kind of again rings bells as to how they wouldn't let Brittany take out her iud because if she had a baby of course she would have to take time off and time off meant no money and a lot of what jamie lynn says here kind of aligns with what lynn said in her book lynn describes how professionals of jamie lynn's management team came to decide what was best for her and their decision that the best thing for her would be to send her to a christian based residual facility in tennessee i.e. Mercy Ministries, a kind of rehab where teen girls who are struggling with various issues, including pregnancy, can go for ministry. At first, I agreed, based on the assumption that I would be going with her and we would live together with some kind of dorm or something, I was still in shock over the news that my child was going to give birth, and I was badly rattled, fragile, uncertain. When things were not going well in my life, I tend to really question my own judgement, and this, the fact that everyone else, including Jamie Lynn's business manager, i.e. Lou Taylor, Jamie Lynn's interventionalist and AA sponsor, and Jamie himself, were saying, this is absolutely what we need to do, I went along with it. And this does kind of lead me to believe maybe Lynn might be, you know, a victim of some sort of abuse, maybe earlier down in her career. She definitely went on to say in her book that there was emotional abuse between her and Jamie. So maybe Lynn has some, you know, sufferings and trauma herself. But again, just because you are and you have gone through stuff, that doesn't make it okay to be coercive and complicit in the abuse of others so I still think she could have done way more to help Brittany but Lynn goes on to say in this part of her book when I realized that I couldn't go with Jamie Lynn that she'd be staying there by herself I started to come to my senses while I admire the work that they do at the facility I couldn't see how my daughter would benefit in fact I thought she would be scared to death far from home and far from me it didn't make sense to me and it still doesn't now and later down, it goes on to say, in the end, I made the decision to keep her at home. And again, it just shows the duality of Lynn. She can see how sending away Jamie Lynn in her peak time of trauma wouldn't help. And the separation and the isolation that it brought on would only worsen things. Yet she did that to Britney twice and allegedly used substances against Britney's knowledge to get her to go there. It's just the way that they treat these two kids are like two ends of the spectrum. I was in shock. 
I mean, I really didn't believe it. I mean, you know, I really thought it was just, I thought you were joking with me. Yeah. I guess then it was like big time worry there as to, you were 16, you know, yeah. you were 16. For whatever reason at that time, the best way to tell my mother was to write a note and put it in a room and go sit in another room and wait for her. When I first found out Jamelin was pregnant, it was totally a shock to me. She came there, she goes, is this a joke? You're joking, right? You're, you're joking. I just don't think, you know, I just don't think she really comprehended it. She called my daddy. For me, I think the world stopped a couple seconds. I didn't take it very well. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it was, it was, it was a total shock. They, I mean, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Things were not great for a while there. They weren't. I just, uh, I just kind of lost it for a while. I was afraid for her. And I don't know, I mean, she was my baby. Back to Jamie Lynn's book, where she goes on to say, At 16, my impressionable heart had already woven dreams of a home where Casper and I could raise our baby and prove we could be happy. The only way that could happen, and fast, was to move out from under my parents' roof and be on my own. Resistance to this idea quickly came from all fronts. My mama and daddy thought I was being foolish and my brother Brian felt sad that I was dealing with such weighty decisions at my age. Brittany was in the midst of her own crisis and because we were isolated from each other, our communication was non-existent. And this does make me kind of wonder whether like this whole event may be kind of the starting point at which, since they were both going through their ordeals, couldn't lean on each other in their times of need, it drove a wedge between them that was never fixed and never healed. And Brittany could see that her sister was being treated differently from her and that just drove resentment between them both because Jamie Lynn wanted Britney's fame and couldn't get it and maybe Britney wanted to be treated the way that Jamie Lynn was being treated by her parents and rightly so. Since Jamie Lynn says it herself, Britney's time of need was seen as a crisis whereas Jamie Lynn's time of need turned out to be this wonderful miracle that seemingly brought Lynn and Jamie back together and allowed them to get a million dollar bonus from OK Magazine through the publishing of it, whereas everything in the media about Britney was seemingly disparaging about both Britney and her family. So it's like, again, everything that was going on with Britney was seen as bad, whereas Jamie Lynn's, even at the time of need, was somehow elevated to this level that was angelic and good. My family denied my attempts to be independent and left me with no other choice than to threaten to file for emancipation with the cause. I spent days agonising with my decision and if you don't know what emancipation is, that's basically where a minor, although again you're still a minor, in the eyes of the law you are an adult, you have the full rights and everything because you are now autonomous and not under the control and guardianship of your parents. And the only other time I've heard of this in terms of like celebrity status, although I haven't really researched it, was how Jaden Smith, Will Smith's son, filed for emancipation, I think when he was either 16 or 17. But this last bit of the article goes on to say that she followed her gut and instructed her new lawyer to go ahead and draw up the petition. The following Saturday morning, my lawyer and I showed up and served my mama with papers. This mustn't have been that long before Britney served her mum with papers as well in terms of a cease and desist that I went on to show you in the other video. Like, to have all of these members of your family, like your daughter, serving you papers all the time, there must be something wrong. Daddy was gone at this point and Mama contacted the team to discuss the issues. They had real concerns about me marrying my boyfriend and giving him access to all of my earnings. Simultaneously, my sister was experiencing her own breakdown and media speculation about her wellness and our family already had the paparazzi swarming. Everyone involved with my saga reluctantly agreed that we need to do what was best to avoid any more negative media attention. And again, the fact that they were concerned about her boyfriend accessing her earnings, that is a legitimate threat and it does need to be considered, I suppose, when you are of high profile, especially at such a young age. But it just shows their main motives and main focus was always to with money, not the health and well-being of Jamie Lynn. And I think this is just encapsulated perfectly by how Jamie Lynn got $1 million for her US pregnancy announcement with OK Magazine where the magazine was able to get an exclusive story on her pregnancy with options to purchase additional material, including first pictures of her baby. Lynn knew OK would pay the most, says the source. It was her decision. So again, for Lynn now to be blamed by Britney, that does just fit in because it seems like Lynn is maybe more behind the scenes doing stuff, especially with their finances and things that 
we weren't aware initially and again like the fact that she's the one that orchestrated this whole ordeal highlights that the money was always the main motive the father of Brittany and Jamie Lynn Spears is furious with the ex-wife's decision to cash in on their 16 year old daughter's pregnancy he doesn't get a dime from his daughters a source said and this was all going on before the conservatorship so that's changed a hell of a lot now I wonder if, <laughs> I wonder if Jamie remembers saying this and to be honest I don't believe that he wasn't benefiting from them at the time and even if he wasn't the fact that he's using it as some kind of moral righteousness says that especially compared to now it shows that it wasn't his morals dictating that he wasn't getting money it's just that he didn't have the opportunity and as soon as he did he cashed in big time Jamie at the time had been working as a private chef to make a living, the source added, while ex-wife Lynn arranged the $1 million deal with OK Magazine for which she will take a cut, Lynn also receiving a percentage of her daughter's salary, which I don't believe is true, I'm not sure, but everything from the court filings, like dating back even pre-conservatorship, just shows Brittany and like management teams being paid, and then as soon as Jamie became conservator, he started to receive, I think it was 1.5 gross on the percentage from all revenue of the tours that Brittany did and the residence she did at Vegas. And although Jamie Lynn has come out a couple of times saying that Zoe 101 didn't finish because she was pregnant, saying things like it did not end because of my pregnancy, there was speculation that that was one of the reasons why it ended, but Jamie Lynn says that the contract had ended whether she was pregnant or not but presumably they weren't going to renew it if she was pregnant. So that just kind of means that Lynn had to do the cash grab while she could, or at least that was her thinking. But that's it for this video. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Do you think it's fair that Jamie Lynn didn't have a hand in trying to rescue Brittany because maybe she just didn't know how to and she was kind of maybe brainwashed by a dad or that she should have had the guts and gone through stuff herself she should have known that she needed to be someone who could reach in from an outside perspective to help Brittany let me know down in the comments below and although we've hit 2k and thank you so much for that I think I might push it to trying to get 2.5k by the end of the year although I really doubt I'll do that but anyway I'd really appreciate if you hit the like and subscribe and see you around in the next one thank you so much for watching bye say what you want to say to me now.